from downtown Los Angeles or downtown adjacent Los Angeles from MacArthur Park where Richard Harris sang a really, really long, terrible song about Harmontown is now in session. Let's, let's bring out... Don't think of it as losing a game master. Think of it as gaining a Rob Schraub. Country. Where's Ask what your country can do for you. Da -da -da -da. Where is Spencer? Where is Spencer? What, what have we done to offend Where him? is Spencer? Do we know? I didn't kill him. <laughs> we, just, we, just, we, just, we just started having a big fight in the green room, you and me. I wasn't aware of this. Why? What? What did you? What did you do? It's a bad. It's diehard. Like you just. Like, like I don't even want to uh, forget it. I'm sorry I brought it up. What was the beef? Uh, it was. It was just. I, Rob is misremembering uh, diehard stuff, and I, I. I just watched Die Hard again around Christmas time because, as we all know, it's a Christmas movie. Um and. Uh, I the, the, uh, uh, we were talking about the number of times, like the runner of John McClane rolling his eyes at California culture as he arrives. He's going to cross the threshold. So, so in no necessary order, let's enumerate them. You're mixing and matching, like there are women hitting on him. That's about his marriage to Holly Gennaro. Yes. Okay, the, the flight attendant. Yes. I almost called her a stewardess, but that would have been fine in diehard times. Ah. Um, she, she gives him goo goo eyes, and he's like, hmm. what abs? I think that's just establishing. No, he's, he's, my perception is he's like, this is going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult to, to came, not came fuck back, people came, that aren't my wife. He flew out to... Why are they getting a divorce? Because, Why are they separated? Because, because she chose her career and, and went to New York, and he was like, an, like a silently abusive male who was like not putting his hands on her, but was like, I'm a New York cop. He explains this all to Argyle. <laughs> like, he has no reason to lie. Argyle. He explains it to Argyle. He goes, I'm a New York cop. Like, I got cases to solve. I'm not going to up and leave for who's, Los Angeles. Who's, who's our guy? Oh, the, the, the limo. The fucking limo. Drive. See, oh, okay. all right. I, I, I didn't know there was a guy in the, in, the, in, the, in the plane that said, take your socks off. And I thought, oh, his name is Argyle. That makes sense. <laughs> but I was wrong. Oh, oh you, is that That it's kind of purpose? a David Lynch thing, right? There's yeah. like uh, the, the, the One guy says, take your socks off. with your toes. And then, and then, and then my name is Argyle. And he, they're, 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 yeah. My name is Commander Socks. And like that, that would be like a David Lynch thing. Like, uh, but, but you forget what I was. You never got a chance to let me finish my thought. That the whole reason, like, there is a, there is a, the first person to play John McClane was Frank Sinatra. Oh, right. Yeah. No, that's very interesting to me. I'm not being sarcastic. Uh, uh, yes. Because they, they made, they were, okay, so Die Hard is made on a, uh, is, is based off of a book. I don't know the name of the book. Somebody look it up, all right? I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Anyway, it's a Snakes on a Plane. Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> the original. <laughs> the original. 1934 uh, Joseph Conrad novel. <laughs> okay. So that so Die Hard the book it's not called Die Hard the book but let's just say <laughs> Die Hard the book is a sequel to another story another book 
featuring John McClane that was already made into the into a movie starring Frank Sinatra. So the character's name was John McClane. I think so, but it's based off of the it's the same series. I think they switched it up a little bit. I don't know. I haven't seen this movie. I would like to hang out with you. <laughs> So right. Frank Sinatra played a character in a film called John, and the character's name was John McClane. Uh, it's a I don't I think they might have changed the name or whatever. I don't know the, I don't have it in front of me, but it is the thing is, the point is is that when they made Die Hard, they had to go to Frank Sinatra who I think was in his 70s at the time and say, "Hey, do you want to play John McClane?" Contractually, they had to go to him and he right. went, uh, "What? No." And, and they went, oh, okay, because we already cast it with somebody else. <laughs> okay, so some problems solve themselves. Well, he was 70. He's not going to do yippee ki motherfucker, and shooting the glass and the, and the, the hose walking. You know, he's not going to do that. He's 70. So I somebody mean, he's had Frank like, Sinatra, but he's 70, man. Like at Sinatra Ranch, a helicopter landed, and like two guys could come out in suits with take their hats off, like, Mrs. Sinatra, is Frank home? She's like, she opens the door wider and he comes with the IV bag on the rack and he's like, what do you want, baby? And, uh, and they go, Mr. Sinatra, are, do you want to play uh, a 1982 action hero? <laughs> 1986, 87, when was Die Hard? Do you want to play, uh, do you want to, do you want to, uh, uh, pick up where the star. Wait, we're either going to use you or the or the star of the Seagram's wine cooler commercials. And he said, "Ring a ding ding, Jack." Okay, good. We're glad you said that because uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was a close one because we're halfway through shooting. <laughs> Ring a ding ding, Jack. Instead right, of well, Yippie Kaye. Yeah. Motherfucker. Right, because he, he didn't. This want is to... kind of a sequel to last week's show because you were saying Yippie Kaye references. I was. All right. Is that well, a question? Yeah. Re- listen to the recording. Was I here? All right. Well, I apologize for the show tonight. Uh, I, it's, it's rainy. No one wants to be here. Uh, uh, except for you guys, I'm sure. The, 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 and, and we'll make it worth your while. <laughs> and Spencer. The, the rest of the country is freezing, freezing, freezing. It's been raining here nonstop. Oh, my God. It's I, I, so I like that, cold. I like the church has two seats taped off next to her. Like, she, she doesn't like... <laughs> human, human contact. Like just, it's, just, <laughs> it's just seats reserved for your, your the 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 poles. Yeah. The, like, her, her aura. The, the mania and depression are reserved. For, <laughs> like don't come near me. Yeah. When is it reserved I'm a for Shiva? And, yeah, and when figure is it, it out for Allah. Um, I almost hit. I almost hit somebody tonight with my car. With your car. Thank you for your applause. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> weird Hallmark Theater version of the devil. Uh, who, oh, I love. Uh, <laughs> or the Adams Family. Adams Family. They're like this soap. This soup is cold. I love it. What show? The Adams Family. Sorry. What? Yeah. What show? Never mind. Just come on. He, he met the monsters. No, no. It's the Adams Family. They're like. They're like. That's. How do you like my dress? It's. It's dark. It's tattered. It looks like a funeral gown. I love it. Gomez, you were terrible last night. Please do it again. Uh, do you think that extends to like, do they end up just randomly inverting things? Like if the Adams family lasted 30 seasons, would they just be like, I'm standing in this chair because I love hate it. <laughs> and they're just like floating around the room. Like, cubes are circles. I sneezed, because they're not. I sneezed backwards and drank all these boogers. You seriously think about it. You couldn't. You couldn't make like. <laughs> you couldn't make the Adams Family movie these days because there's too much. Like we feel like we're pressing up against the edges of evil, right? Because the that was like a very Clinton era like kind of thing. Like you could be punk rock. Like let's remake the Adams Family because who doesn't want to be? It was like 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 oh Lydia in Beetlejuice is Wednesday Adams. So let's do the Adams Family. Okay, that's fun. Like who doesn't feel like an Adams in when they're in high school? But the 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 answer is everyone who's like feels like their life is in danger now. It's like 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 if you were if you really go down the road of what the Adams family like the bits they'd be doing, it would be like I can't even, I can't even riff examples. The I'll misfits. Get, I'll get booed off the stage because of the examples. I the just, misfits. Just, the the ne'er do wells. The people in yeah. the back of the bus. The people the 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 square pegs and the round holes of life. 
These people. That's who you're. you're who are addressing. you voting for when you turn 18 Wednesday? Who's the most divisive candidate? Good girl. Which, uh, uh, which school would you like to go to? Columbine. Oh, you're such a, oh, you're such an Adams. You're so on theme with your Adamsness. you want to go to the bloodiest place for school. Yeah, I, see, I told you, and if I tell you, you're not allowed to be offended. It's called getting out in front of it. Look it up. On your precious internet that kicked me off of it. I got nothing to do now but collect cookies on my iPad and wait I was for in the Armageddon. Car, I, I was in the car with Dan on the way here, and uh, he was collecting all those cookies. Did man. he hit anybody? <laughs> oh, yeah, so I almost hit somebody. <laughs> it wasn't because I was calling. The whole audience is now like guys in top hats. Uh, like, I, I, mm, I, delicious. I, I, I just got controlled by Shrub. <laughs> Somebody's got to take control. Somebody's got to get this train into the station. Somebody's got to keep the, the, the fucking bells ringing on time. And I wasn't collecting me. cookies. Ooh, and I, wasn't, I, got a text. I wasn't doing anything particularly. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, Rob, Rob has a text. Rob has a text. This comes from Chris Boroff in the sound booth. Your peas are popping. My peas <laughs> are popping. No, uh, apparently the Frank Sinatra movie Nothing Lasts Forever and that was written by Roderick Thorpe. <laughs> I accept your apology. All right, anyways, I almost hit a, a, a young lady. <laughs> I, I, like, I... I, I want to minimize it by saying she was dressed like a ninja, but she was, you know, it was yoga pants and a, and a, and a sweater. It wasn't the brightest sweater in the world. It's, look, it's my fault. I'm in the one in the vehicle. But it, it, uh, it's just kind of like, it's still a weird thing because I wasn't really doing anything irresponsible. I just wasn't driving as if you might hit someone any, any moment. Like, it just got too comfortable. So used to, like, get off the freeway. Were you doing the Tesla hands-free? Like no, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's just get off the freeway and like psychologically in like autopilot, not actual Tesla autopilot, like just sort of like, this is what I do every day. This is, there's no, no, there's never pedestrians around here. And it just had that experience of like, she was jogging and she, I, I just sort of like, I didn't, I, I, I'm, I'm so used to taking this corner and I just kind of like, yeah, I slow down, but there's no stop sign there, so I, I'm I'm gonna I slow down a little bit, and then I'm gonna take this corner. And as I'm taking this corner, this there there's this person, and they're jogging, and I slam on the brakes, and she looks over her shoulder, hearing the silent uh, plaintive wail of a of a Tesla coming to a halt, <laughs> uh, and and she kind of like like lip synced some stuff, and I can't hear her because of my amazing car that seals off all sound and, and air. Um, and she kind of like jogs away, a, a, a mute, a mute poor person calling her pointless cries into the uh, filthy air that I don't have to breathe in my Tesla. This story is getting charming. Uh, but I just, I was, I was like very, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it was like the sliding doors moment, you know, because I, I, I could have just tapped, you know, I might have just tapped her uh, on her, on her, on her hip, and surely she would have like. Full boom, you know, like all over. It's like there's a zero sum game when it comes to like your car colliding with a pedestrian. You either do it or you don't. Even if she hadn't been seriously injured, it was like you just like kind of like if a car just slides into you at two miles an hour, you like she would ragdoll off of my hood. Just imagine, I wouldn't be here tonight. It's just, imagine your whole life could it would be changed. I don't know what my point is. Nothing matters. Vote for Ron Perlman. <laughs> Zero sums game. Oh, God. What is, okay, all right. Now, come let's, on. Let's bring out our guest. What uh, is that? No. Come on. Uh, come on. Uh, uh, Explain yourself. He's here promoting his upcoming uh, uh, Comedy Central special, which was last month, but he had to reschedule, so please welcome Ron Funches. Yay! <laughs> What's
What's up, Ron? Hi, Jeff. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good. How are you? I'm good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little... I've been traveling and I'm a little sleepy, but I'm kind of in that Ron Funches kind of mellow zone. That's a good zone to be in. <laughs> are, are, are you actually this mellow or is this, is this like a put on? Like, are, are, do you... Is Ron Funches actually this much Funches? I mean, I didn't enjoy that pun. <laughs> I don't no. go with everything. I, 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 aspi- I, I aspire to be in that mellow zone that you're in. It's not bad. Yeah. How would we ever know if you were silently raging, though? Like, I, will, um, I guess you wouldn't, because I'd be silent right. unless you were in tune with me. Like a lot of people who are less, I think, pleasant than you. A lot of uh-huh. people less pleasant than you. If we were to uh, uh, act like you usually do, mm-hmm. like it would for us of the less pleasant variety, it might be a warning sign that we were upset about something. Does that make sense? Oh, if you were to act like me? Yeah, if we were like so osmiotic, osmotic, osmotically kind of like permeable, like you're you're always like, hey Ron, how you doing? I'm doing good, I'm fine. And it's like, if, if, if someone asked me how I'm doing and I said that, it might mean that I was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> might mean you'd hit that lady with your car. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, Ron, I got a body to bury. I'm okay. <laughs> Ron, did we, did, did we talk about this before on the show? I, I was behind you at an airport, and I, I thought it was you, but you, like, you were in front of me, so I, I didn't see your face. But I, I, I thought, I think that's Ron. And you got stopped by airport security, and you got the, the full Monty. They, they, <laughs> they, they, you got pat down the whole thing. And you were the only non-white person at that airport. I, I don't even remember where it was. Maybe Washington or something. And you got the whole thing, and you were just chill and fucking groovy. Like, like, like I would have been fucking pissed off. You, 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 were, you just like let it happen. And, uh... Well, I mean, I'm usually pretty chill about it because I do have drugs with me. So... <laughs> So you got to play it cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, always the thing that makes me laugh. I'm always like, oh, you guys are oh, so thorough. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a transition for you? Were you, as a six-year-old child on the playground, were you uh, easygoing and pleasant and giggly and cuddly? Or did you have a come to Jesus, like John the Baptist, uh, holy shit, like if we flash back to you, there's an origin story where you're like putting thumbtacks under frogs. And... <laughs> what? <laughs> it's something John the Baptist did. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Hey, Rob. No one's supposed to unpack my language that much. I just... <laughs> To get the general gist of the question. Yeah, people usually just go with whatever you say. Yeah. Yeah, what are you guys, Pete Holmes or something? Like, <laughs> listening to what I ask and um, revealing that it makes no sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, my question is like, yeah, like, what, were, you, were you always... Yeah, my, uh, my yeah. learned habit, or is this just who, who I am? Or have you gone through epiphanies, thresholds? I think, yeah, everybody does. You know, everybody goes through growth, personal change, just people, you know. Um, and I've gone through enough... I think I have enough personal traumas. Like, my life's never been, like, easy. So, like, I have a single parent. My mom's a single parent. And we moved into from Chicago, or from L.A. to Chicago and lived in a rough area. And then my mom was in, like, an abusive relationship. and With uh, you. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't good. Uh, <laughs> but whatever, All right, not a funny joke. Yeah, it's not a good. T- I mean, just let things. I cast land. a white net. Sometimes they're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, sometimes you gotta pick your moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. You all don't the time ask have to me a question moment. and then undercut my life. Tell me the deep dark secrets about who ma- makes you who you are, uh, and then also I'm gonna make a bad uh, joke. Fart, 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 fart. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you ate a fart in front of you to eat a fart sandwich? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I got what I deserved. Let it go and keep answering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
Uh, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just stuff like that, and then my life, and then my son, and you know, and my son has was had I had some very young when he was, when I was twenty, and then he found out he had autism by the time I was twenty two, and um, and that kind of was just like. I think I just had enough things kind of tweak my brain where I was like, oh, I know what I want to do, and, I, and I'm going to just try to do this. And and once I started getting a little, it wasn't always good. I was, a, you know, in my early 20s, I wasn't like a great person. I didn't know what I was doing. I was afloat, just kind of being like a shitty nerd, you know? When, you know, when you're like, oh, but I get picked on, and things have been bad for me, so my life owes me shit, right. you know? And then I just had a point where I realized, like, nothing was coming to me. I had to go and get whatever I, I, I was going to get, and... um were there any moments like like, like like that you remember where you that were like like external stimulations, whether they were like events or conversations where you were like, oh, and from that, and then that's when I realized, oh shit, I've been doing this this way, and I should do it this way now instead. Like like, were there any like defining moments? Is what is what I I don't know. I mean, my is what I'll undercut, and then I'll. I'll <laughs> I mean, the most moment that I, I think that put me into like high gear and and mo, mo, my most motivating moment was a little bit after I found out my son was diagnosed with autism, and then I went into this park um, that I had always taken my son to when he was young and or younger because he was two at the time he was diagnosed. So I'm just like one. Or this is also the same park that I used to smoke weed in when I was in high school, and me and my girlfriend would just go hang out and make out there. Who who eventually was my ex-wife and um and we're there and we find out that you know we're just kind of shell shock and just kind of talking about it and then we see like a group of disabled adults and their caretakers kind of pull up to the park as well and um the way that the caretakers spoke to them and treated them was very um dismissive and very cruel um, and you treated them more like if they were, were prisoners than, than, than people to be looked after. And um, at that point, I was like, oh, I have to figure out a, like a career. I have to figure out something. This is bigger than me and whatever I'm doing. Like, is I it, guess, This is before that you uh, started doing comedy? This yeah. Is, so, and then you chose comedy out of that? Epiphany? Yeah. So were you, I just want to unpack It's weird that, for you guys moment. to be on other, each side like this. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, the, uh, that, just focusing in on that moment, just to understand it, the, you, you, this caretaker's being uh, flippant, abusive, whatever just word very, you want to use. Just very, as if they were like prisoners. You and know, were you, yelling at them. Were you, was your epiphany because you felt like, oh, that's a shitty person, and then did you see a little bit of your like, oh, I've been a shitty person to other no. people, or were you thinking, like, I never want to be that person? I was or? more like, I don't want to be like that, and it was more like, I don't want that for my son, and it was, I guess I'm, I guess I'm not really fond oh, okay. of doing your thing. It's more, this was more motivating than me as a person. I think that anything that's me as a person has been just, um... Well, no, wait, no, that's good. You like this no, story? That's Don't. good that you're, because I'm a narcissist, so I'm thinking about filing things through. Oh, you're a narcissist? Yeah, really? Shocked. You told a story about you almost killed a lady, and you were like, I could have been late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she should have dressed like a ninja. <laughs> she had a bright white sweater on. I was, like, <laughs> so, like, like, immediately caught myself revising. I was like, I'm going to describe this story. This is something interesting to talk about. She was dressed so darkly, and I'm like, she had a fucking white sweater on. Stop it. Um, but um, the but no but the the idea that so the, your answer to the question is is more interesting because you're feeling you felt empathy for the uh, disenfranchised in that moment, and so what you were feeling was so those people need uh, someone to be better for them, and uh, and the only people that are in a position to be better for them are people that have that option, and that and that that invited you upward to that plane is what. I'm kind of interpreting well, it. Well, mostly it was just like, I got to make a lot of money so my son's never in this fucking position. Ah, oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> but, did, did, and you were what, 22 you said at the time? Mm-hmm. And so you said, I, I got to make this money, and did you, 
when was the decision to go to comedy? Like, were you were you already kind of leaning in that direction? Like, you yeah, I always wanted to do it. You know, it was just a thing that I was interested in, but I didn't think it was a real job. Um, and so I just was like, I knew I needed a career and not just a job. I was working at like this bank call center, and I hated it. And I knew that I couldn't stay there. What what, what part of town were you in? In Salem, Oregon. Yeah, and so, yeah. and do you start like like doing open mics and like? Doing yeah, I started doing mics in Portland, and and um, and then there's this Chinese food restaurant in Salem that had this show. It's a place called Lucky Fortune. I've been there. It's good. You've been there. It's yeah, done, yeah. Uh, so you know they would do shows, and you get Chinese food, and the guy would sell bootleg movies after the shows, and it was just <laughs> a, a good place for you to cut your crack, cut your teeth, you know. Oh, it's like they had an open mic there. No, it was just a show. It was a show, but it wasn't good. And so my. <laughs> Might as well. He'd always just lie and be like. I remember for years he, um, he 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 was telling me that this this um. I already forgot the name. No, the story's gonna be horrible. So never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you do? I'm curious. So you 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 if you have that epiphany, it's a little. It's like it's, like, it's your Buddha moment. You're like okay. I like that, like my kid. I if I, if he slips through my fingers, he's going to end up a ward of people like this guy that you saw in the park. And so then you go, I got to do what I love, not just I got to go get a job managing a factory floor. Like it's it's about money, but it's also about following your bliss. So what does somebody young do when they decide they want to take? comedy seriously like what are your first steps you're like sitting there with a manila uh, a legal pad and a pencil or like 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 describe those days yeah i would i mean back then i would like write out full scripts of my jokes and stuff and i'd like go over them and and try to memorize every word and did you inc I, you included people laughing in your head like like you're yeah like, and then i'll pause and then there'll be all this laughter is it just hold for applause. <laughs> and then I would even like fact check my jokes. I would think like, oh, if someone someone hears this joke, they might call me out on the on the background. So I better know about this. <laughs> that's very for the for whatever that era was. It's probably a little uh, overly responsible of you. Yeah, no, I over over prepare. You were ready for today. Like, like, <laughs> back then, you're like, oh god, you're like vetting your stand up against uh, the the ears of 25 million angry people. <laughs> <laughs> what was the threshold, Ron, from uh, like being an open micer, and then like did you did you move to LA right away or no? That would have been a bad decision. <laughs> But the, th the threshold from being like I'm gonna try this out to going oh this is working and like I'm I'm now like like you're you're headlining you're you're being like top man. Uh, I mean, it took a, w a little while, you know. I was doing shows and just going around the country, and I had my friend uh, Will who who would drive us around in his mom's minivan, and we would go and do shows and and book shows up and down Salem and in, in other parts of Oregon and the Northwest. We would just go to different bars and just try to convince them to book a show and that we could bring an audience in, and we'd book one show, and then they realized that we could not, and so we <laughs> <laughs> so we would just continue and move on that way. And, and I, I did that for a couple years, and I just started getting better and getting more name for myself, and I would just. Um, so I, you were making deals. You were like J Jim Hensoning it, like the way he like sold the Muppet Show and syndication. You were go at a, you didn't have an agent that was like, "This here's Ron Funches, and I'm going to book you on this circuit. You're going to open for so and so no, if you pick him up." No, you from work the in this business. You, I don't start with an agent. <laughs> No, I had to book my own shows and a lot of my own But you were going to bars and convincing them to have yeah. a venue in the first place so that you could perform there, and then you were making a deal with them to like, take part of the door? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me and my friend we kind of like was my business partner, and we just do that together. He, um, we would go scout locations and, and, and just try to make deals, and I ran, a, a, I ran my own weekly show at a coffee house, and, and those were then, like the most pressure-filled days because a lot of times... That would be like I was like, oh, I need to pass this hat around for money so that I can come home and, and bring my son and my my ex home food and stuff. You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't making like any money at that time. So that um, what do you say? I mean, there is like, there are people in the world, probably half of my the the, the, the listeners. Uh, 
It's like the the idea of inoffensive comedy. Like it sounds like a pejorative in terms of comedy, oxymoronic, contradictory. The idea that you could be funny without hurting people, without taking anybody down, without like attacking, without having, without without wounding and things. But you're pretty much like your stand up is is giggle fit. Is a, 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 yeah, a comedy central. Special, yeah. You also got your um uh uh. Well, we'll talk about getting better in a second, but mm -hmm. um, but but like you would you you would, you would characterize your goal when you get on stage, or maybe not your goal, but like your mo is like you don't you're you're not you're not leaving a body count, right? You're not you're not like no. you're not hurting people. I never understood that as a theme of what comedy needs to be. That there are, I mean, sure, sometimes you attack things, but I think your job as a comedian. I'm a student of comedy. I love comedy. I've loved comedy since I was a young child. And everything, every good comedian I saw, it was like, you, 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 you speak truth to power. You take down people bigger than you. You, you point out the inconsistencies in the status quo. You don't just attack people to attack people. You don't just go like, oh, okay, like Mexicans or this like that. Like you're, that's building the status quo. Mm -hmm. That's reinforcing, like what people are saying. When, when, when your job usually is that you, as a jester, you don't make fun of the townspeople. You make fun of the king. You know. So like I, I, I take that job. Think that very so, seriously. So do you do some? Do, do you do some punching up? In your opinion, I mean, is it is like like it's it, it is punching, but it's punching up. Or like uh, I mean, a little bit. For the most part, I'm also very. I mean, I guess. I, I would say I'm narcissistic in in my own ways in the regard like I prefer just talking about me and my life and what's going on. That's what's exciting to me. I've never been excited about those type of things. I mean, I think my mom, my mom just my mom just said she's like we're just she's like we're not very passionate people. <laughs> 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 She's just explaining that to company when they come over. Yeah, you have to understand the Funches are not passionate people. <laughs> like I don't care about much. I care about my son. I care about my family. I care about a few things, but like I, it would be very um, uh, just not truthful of me to go up there and be. This is what I'm right. ranting about. This right. is what I'm upset right. about. Right, I got, I got, I got ten minutes about about yeah. uh, abortion legislation because yeah. I, I'm like f so focused on that because I have Our, so many wry like quips about it. Like last year, there was like six comedy specials I watch because I, I watch a lot of comedy specials and stuff. Still, there were like six last year, all with like these Caitlyn Jenner jokes, and I know it's even hack to even talk about it now. The thing, but I was just like, why did you guys care so much? Who? Why did you give a fuck? Like. Yeah. You that's how you spend your day? Yeah. But sitting around thinking about Caitlyn Jenner and what, what Caitlyn Jenner wants to do? <laughs> I, think I met Caitlyn yeah. Jenner, not a person worth talking about. I, <laughs> whoa, shots fired. <laughs> I think the cycle that happens, my theory about it is, from talking to my therapist about just like generally like about how positive and negative shit sticks and whatever, and how negative shit sticks so much easier. And that, so it's like, Jokes that we remember, uh, they, they're they're often attached to satire, and like 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 somebody gets taken down a peg, or yeah. something happens, something shifts. Oh, that person made that joke, and then that was like a kaboom, yeah, and and it sticks in your memory for the same reason that and if somebody says like, oh, you're wearing that shirt again, sticks yeah, longer than someone saying, memory. I like your shirt, yeah, yeah. which doesn't stick at all. Yeah, and, and so I think when people are in the nascent stages of their comedic ambitions, they're kind of like, how do I be funny? And they and they. And they sit by that stream of society and they go, well, most important thing is I'll sit here, I'll watch some stuff, and I'll try to think about like what, what I might say that would be funny about it. And they're going to tend to slide into, well, what would I say that would be taking this thing apart? Mm -hmm. You know, um, kind of Joel McHaling, the Kardashians, or you know, D David Spading, the, the, the whatevers. Like, like, and it, because that's the stuff that kind of spikes on the, on the EKG, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it it sticks in your memory. Yeah, but, but then I think, I think about that, like yeah, like Steve Martin. I, yeah. I, my memory of him is like he'd come out and he would just do this like weird one person show. It was just it was just humor. It was absurd and. Well, I just think it's easier. You know, it's it's easier to tear apart than to build. You know, so like when you're trying to actually 
build jokes that don't do that. It just takes longer. It's harder. Sometimes people don't don't get them right away. So it's, it's just the, harder. The beauty of Steve Martin's stuff was that he was clearly in, intellectual, but he was silly. And so we, we got to watch an intellect be stupid, mm -hmm. like for us. And, it and always it, so crazy to me to watch those old ones and be like, this is a stadium yeah. full of people <laughs> watching the guy put an arrow in yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yeah and, and he would go, I'm a wild and crazy guy. And, and the whole place, would, like Madison Square Garden would cheer. It's crazy. You know, it's yeah. interesting, though, is talking about this family tree of comedy or whatever you call it. Like, the, it, uh, he was never personal. He wouldn't go, yeah. so here's what's going on with me. Neither was he political. So George Carlin, very political. Not a lot of personal to George Carlin, right? Like, George Carlin wouldn't, like, pause, take a glass of water, break down, and go, so anyways, I'm married, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Bill Cosby drew all these stories from, from marriage and children, but like, how transparent was it? You're very personal. You talk about raising an autistic kid. You talk about like, like your life. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I, I have no question about this. I just like, wanted to like, go into that area. Like, like when you're, If you're sitting and you're going, uh, I think I'll share this thing about raising, uh, being a single dad, raising an autistic kid. Like, uh, are there ground rules? Do you think to yourself, like, is my kid going to be 30 and, and, and listen to this on a hologram disc one day and get the wrong idea? What are the thoughts that go through your head in terms of filtration? Um, I probably should think more about it. And <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah. Uh, but no, I just kind of... <laughs> I just like to talk about what I love, and I just try to talk about it with love, you know? I think that's been my main goal, is make sure people, you know, talking about my son in particular, I just want to make sure people knew that I wasn't making fun of him, and I wasn't trying to be like, oh, my son has this disability, and this is what's funny about it. Right. It's just more like, this is just a part of my life, this is my son, he does some funny things, or, and these are some just other misunderstandings that have happened, this is just a part of my life. Um, so I just always try to do that. The same thing with my mom. The same thing with, with with anyone that I talk about. I just try to make sure I don't, you know, you know, Louis C.K. and just where you're just <laughs> making everything. You're like, ah, my fucking kids. <laughs> yeah. I I I yeah. I mean, I have stuff to say about that. I I, I like like Louis' style is is so like. He would pace the stage like a caged animal, and he would talk like Charlie Brown, and it had this like viscera to it. And he like, but it was like, is it is it bad to do that if it if if it's not actually transparent? If it's like a periscope that's bouncing off of two mirrors, is it like yeah? And, and does any of that matter? If is well, it Machiavellian where it's like, well, they they laughed, so but I'm like, yeah, but what if they're laughing at like because they think that you're real what if yeah. they think that tim allen really does go home and go oh yeah and, and, and like like i don't know i don't know what crimes are being committed when or what what comedy is supposed to be i i, I yeah i just, well, find I just think so you never want to be too far from your from who you are there's a thing you know with any performance and performers i'm a uh, everybody who know me know i love wrestling and and <laughs> if any really good wrestlers are always like a turned up version of themselves and and i feel like that that's what I try to be as a performer is that, like, you know, you're usually catching me at my happiest, at my most jovial, where I'm trying to have fun. Is that me 24-7? Not at all. Right. But that's when what I'm trying to put forth at that time, you know? And, and I just try to make sure that I, I think when you're, you as a human get too far away from your act, that's when things start to crumble and, and fall apart from you in all in life in all regards. And I just that's why I write personally, and that's why I try to change up my act. And I'm never like I I always when I first started, I always hate it when I see a comedian perform and it'd be like uh, me and my girlfriend, <laughs> and, da, 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 and then they go, oh, I'm single, right. da, 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 and she's like, I got me? married recently. Yeah, and then like, they which one to is a it? <laughs> yeah. Tell me the truth. Now yeah. I don't trust anything that you're saying. It is weird. You, like, I'm willing to go with you on any ride as long as you set up the rules and then follow those fucking rules. Yeah. 
It is it is weird because there there, there was that wave of stand up where it was like it was look we're not jesters anymore we're not we're not wearing makeup and we're not we and it was even past then there was the you know past the Judy Tenuta phase we've had <laughs> like we're we're I, we're, I love Tenuta by the way that, not, I'm not bagging on that phase I like Bob Goldthwait's you know was part it was like there was that phase of stand up where it was like another form of purity where it was like fuck it then we're all characters you know Emo Phillips is an amazing mm -hmm. joke writer and like is he doing a character is he not you meet him in person you're like kind of the same guy etc like that kind of like pedal to the metal character comedy where you're just performing in a more more of the steve martin tradition or or even like the steve allen or the uh oh, like who the, what was the guy with the fiddle god damn it the henny youngman kind of like man. i'm gonna tell a joke um anyways but the coming out of that character phase going into the alternative like hands back in the pockets look at the look at the floor and be real phase and then it was like it the exploitation of that was i found i always found very odd when i was younger when people would say they would purposely exploit the audience's adaptation to the stand-up form by saying i recently got engaged and, and knowing that everyone would actually applaud not because they believe in a construct but because they actually f believe you because why would you stand on a stage in a sport jacket and tell people you got engaged unless you recently did? And then for your and then to say to a goat and, and, and like have everybody go, like, oh, I guess I'm a piece of shit. Like seems to, yeah, I guess I'm just beating your dead horse. Like it's like why? Like I always found that yeah very odd. But then again, I was a terrible stand up. I could never write a joke to yeah, save my life. Yeah, to me it just be like if a magician was showing you this trick and then it was just like, <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you. I didn't do <laughs> Dan, what, 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 was, what was your best closer when you when you were Fuck you. My stand-up was horrible. Give me a closer. Give me one of your closers. I was 17 years old. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, it was bad. Shroblick's very excited about this. You can't, no, like, let's not even talk about it. Like, like, like. Uh, no, we can talk was, about it. No, it was. Get, no, no, we give, me, give me a closer. I didn't have a fucking closer. I would do a rap about masturbation. Hmm. Nice. Raps are the first way you start. It would make it would make it would, it would make the audience would applaud or I mean clap their hands. No, mm -hmm. no th thank you. So. I did a rap. I did a rap. I did a game show that was stupid. I, uh, <laughs> my yeah, very yeah, Ron, what was your first like shitty closer like that? that, that, you, that my you... very first set, I just talked about man boobs for like ten minutes, and then I was wearing. I read a thing because I was doing my research. Right. I read a thing about how people would take pantyhose and cut out the crotch, put it over their head, and, and wear it as like a T-shirt to combat man boobs. And so then that, my thing was like I would take off my shirt and I'd be wearing that <laughs> it killed because <laughs> it's personal it's yeah. real yeah it's true to my life. Spe speaking of physique, I, uh, you, you and I both have uh, we, we've been we've been bigger than e either of us is now. <laughs> is that right grammar? Did I use the right grammar? Yeah, that was either very was now. yeah. Th th beautiful. You were clearly a writer. Do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? Uh, <laughs> do you, uh, you 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 you've been a lot bigger physically? Do you yeah. like, like? I don't know anything about your like if you had epiphanies or if you like just went on a crash diet or what. I have no idea. I I, oh, I, I remember a, de a deep past yeah, memory let's talk of you about being both for because I, I don't know how why you lost or how you did it either. I uh, I I just I started eating like shitty like uh, carb no, carb free uh, alcohol sugar candy bars and then like doing a uh, a uh, 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 le leg lifts in my <laughs> in my living room. But uh, crack. But right. did you did you did you did, what what did you do when and what kind of results did you get? Or um, we can see, or we don't have to make it a fitness podcast. That's okay. We can talk about it a little bit. That, that's why I wasn't sure it was you at that airport. I was like, it looks like skinny Ron Funches is getting patted <laughs> down up there. Nice. <laughs> Oh, can I, wait, wait, okay, let me ask you, this is an easier question about that same topic. When you see a photo of yourself from years ago, okay. does, it, does it make you sad or happy when you see a photo of yourself where you were like, where you look 
way bigger than you are now in your mind's eye. And so like someone goes like, "Hey, look at this photo from New mm-hmm. Year's Eve uh, years ago." Like, it does it does it what what emotional impact does that have on um, you? Um, it's a little range of emotions. I mean, I I'm proud of myself for for making changes and for doing it. Um, you know, just doing the hard work to do that, and that makes me proud. It makes me sad sometimes that I ever let myself get to that point, because sometimes I, and it's not about the weight, but I can, like, look at the pictures, and I can see my, my eyes, and I can see, like, oh, you don't look healthy at all, you know? And and, and I just look back, and I go, that was a bad time period in general. You just know? psychologically. Yeah. Like, you're smiling, and you're supposedly happy, but you're, yeah, but you're I'm able not. to see. Yeah, I'm able to see and go, like, oh, you're upset about your divorce, you're worried about your son, you, um, you're not eating healthy at all, you never you worked out once a year, you know, and so it's just like looking at that person and, and then being like, oh, I feel like you're, come here, little puppy, I love you, you know, <laughs> uh, and, but now it just makes me focus to just keep at it and be healthy, and my goal is to be, I want to be uh, um, my healthiest one. I turn. I mean, I'm 35, so I got few oh, years. Oh, fuck you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I am aware that my success level is quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest compliment we can give your generation. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. What I do you think it. you're doing? Get off my lawn. <laughs> That's what I yell now. <laughs> I love it. Um, but my goal is to, I just want to be my healthiest when I turn 40. That's my goal. And I want to see, and then I want to coast from there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have that? It didn't occur to me to ask because we were talking about hurtfulness and like, uh, oh, taking down other people, hurting other people and all that stuff. But what about self? abuse like like mm. what what's your what do you struggle with any kind of like do you have the capacity in you to like hurt yourself say bad stuff yeah, to yourself of course I, i've learned that's been one thing i really have learned to to shy away from and i don't really um enjoy it around me like people who are around me generally know that like i don't like if you put yourself down around me i will be like hey we don't don't do that you can do that on your own time but we don't do that here because, to other people yeah because i just like i don't like it i don't en- enjoy it i don't I, I used to do it a lot but it never served anything is it know? because so if i put myself down around you it, are you is it just your empathy and going hey don't put yourself down or are you actually thinking you know what? Like Sarah Silverman told me at one point, she's like, you know, self-loathing and self-love uh, or whatever the opposite supposedly is, it's all mm-hmm. the same bullshit. Yeah, it's your head point. way up your ass. Yeah. Like, in she a lot was, of ways it is. Because she was working with young me and was like yeah. calling me out right away. I was like, yeah, what the fuck is the difference between you hating yourself and loving yourself? It's all yeah, about you. Yeah, it's you going, oh, look at me. And yeah. it's like... Who who are you to judge? You uh, you don't get to fucking judge. And to me, to when it's to when it's talking about the people around me, um, or, or, or people I've dated or thing around me, I've always been like, look, I I like you. I like being around you. So if you're don't telling me, it. yeah, if you're telling me this stuff, are you telling me I'm wrong? Right. Like, are you telling me I'm a bad judge of character? Because one thing I've learned from my mom and from my mom being in an abusive relationship and shit like that is if some Someone tells you who they are, fucking believe them. So if you tell me you're a piece of shit, I will believe you. So you either do or don't. Right. Yeah, you may as well just yes and them because, like, if if you you don't want to get into a tango with them, where your job becomes to talk them out of yeah, it. Yeah, that's a waste. That's not going to help them worry it's you. It's a waste of my energy. We're, life is rough, no matter. Why do we have to? I um and our brains are so fucking powerful, you know. Like I can't fight. You can do things to change your reality, but I can't fight your perspective <laughs> for you. You know, right? Like, I can't fight your brain. You know. Yeah, Spencer, who's like a really big fan of yours, so it's a bummer he's not here. I um, know. I love Spencer. Uh, he he said something like many years ago, which is like really like his he we we, we kind of plucked him out of his parents' uh, basement and took him on tour in the in the that movie I gross. made about myself. I know it's a, <laughs> so there's nothing healthy about any of it, but I, but I remember him like in the context of that documentary, like like actually having a valuable takeaway from it, which I never got, which is uh, you know everybody is so 
focused on themselves. They have such shit to work out, so many things to worry about with themselves. They're not, you, you may feel like they're thinking about you, but they're not mm -hmm. so caught up in you. That yeah. it, 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 and there's, there's something there that's more like, it, it's like you can, you can understand that, but realizing that, i.e. making it real, takes therapy. It right? takes a bit, or like just go take a piss in the street. <laughs> Like, legit, like, you could just do it. See yeah. who stops you. No one. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go broke and, like, and ask for a quarter on the yeah. corner and see how many people are caught up in your, yeah. That, no I think one. That, Have it, a family member die. But it, <laughs> <laughs> Be a family member that dies. Yeah. Yeah. See how quickly people move on. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're they're Teflon. Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't have to worry about your scrambled eggs dirtying anyone's pan. Like, you're, you're gonna slip right off of them. Uh, it's almost worse news than you thought. <laughs> um, but did, are you are you are you in therapy? Did, regularly? Yeah. Shout out to Donna. <laughs> 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 um, how, how, how do you know, like, to do, my therapist at the end of my last couple sessions, now this is not a humble brag, because I obviously need more therapy than anybody, but I, my therapist's last couple of sessions is, she's done this thing where she goes, so, you want to schedule, what do you want to do? You want to schedule next week, uh, next month? And I kind of, like, I'm wondering, like, is it like a chiropractor where eventually they go like, look, you're, you know what you're supposed to be doing, I, I, my job isn't to do it for you 50 minutes a week, so why are you fucking coming in here? Yeah. Like, I've tried, do you go to your therapist once a week, or do you, did you taper off? Into, we taper off a little bit. I was seeing her once a week for a, for a little bit, and then now it's been like once a month, once every few weeks, just to check in every now and again, or if I feel like I need more, of course, I'll be like, hey, let's schedule. So it, I think it's just, yeah, I think... It all just depends about what you need, you know? I kind of felt like my, my, my personal journey, uh, like at this point from talking to her, I'm like, I said to her, well, look, I'm, I think it would be a mistake for me to like go, oh, uh, I'll only come to therapy when my life is so dramatic I have something to talk to you about because it seems like my biggest challenge right now is I need to be, become a native of boredom. Mm. I, need to, I need to stop. I have the compulsion. I feel like like... Happiness has come to me, and I have a neurological compulsion. I want to, I want to I wanna make things dramatic so that I know what to do. Mm. Like I have a role to play. If somebody, 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 a... tell me I'm behind schedule, so I can fucking tell them it doesn't matter. And it's like no, like once you get things. Well, I think that's part of the, even the therapy, right? Like with the, even the the transition is a lot of it going like you gotta let go of old realities and old pasts and things that don't serve you anymore. And if that's not true, then then why do that? If you've worked so hard or fallen luckily into or whatever the situation be is, how that, dare that, you? You know, <laughs> you know, I don't trust older white people. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> how dare you not know how hard I clawed my way up, <laughs> you 35-year-old piece of shit. <laughs> I am Spartacus. That's like we all we all are. That's how I feel. <laughs> We're all when Spartacus, people, come on. Like, you don't know what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, that's what the times have been. It's like it doesn't really matter. Like, privilege, not privilege, the one thing that we all have in common is that someone implying that you're your privilege is deeply offensive to you. Yeah. You could be like, you could be born on a pile of of beautiful like cloud, and, and like it would still. The most human part of you is the part of you that would be like, "What are you talking about?" If somebody said to you, "Hey, you 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 uh, you've had it good," like, <laughs> like 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 the part of you that was like, "Fuck what? Fuck you!" No, uh, that would be the one part of you that's connected to everybody else, which is deeply unfortunate. I, 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 I'm still trying to get accustomed to that. I, I, it's like, like the, the, this underdog story that I've crafted for mm -hmm. myself. You know, like everybody's an underdog in comedy. We were just talking about that a minute ago. It's like yeah, that, that your nerd story rage doesn't matter. Thing. That's what I'm, I've been trying to transition from. Is that 
um, you you work so hard, especially if you you don't live in LA. You're like, I want to get here, get here, get here, and then like I have my story, and it's like, well, every fucking person that made it to where you are has a story, so your story doesn't matter anymore. It's almost like thank God for some of the most horrible people in the world. Thank God for incels. Thank God, but for for actually like taking that off of the plate. <laughs> Taking that out of the buffet because you can't be outraged about it's it's like oh that has a voice that has a face and it's not funny, it's not heroic it's not noble the the, the idea that oh you the, the you, you you your unfuckability is hilarious yeah. or dramatic yeah. or a story at all mm-hmm. maybe your unfuckability is just <laughs> it's just a thing that you need to work on yeah uh, I, I it is be like, about yeah. something get a craft get a passion as we look back through our comedic <laughs> archive what we see are things that would one day become manifestos of terrorists who it like played out as like hilarious 10 minute stand up sets in front of a brick wall <laughs> uh, well that's dramatic well I, don't, <laughs> well I guess what I'm saying is comedy does not age well and, and, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the extent to which it does not age well increases by six years per month yeah, yeah. R- r- Ron like You've been doing stand-up for a long time. Do you, do you look back at like jokes that you did a long time ago and the, 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 the sh- shit that just didn't age well that you like? You, is there anything you regret, or have you always kept it pretty, like, like you you didn't cross? Those no, I lines? think any 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 art form, right? If you don't look back at it and go, oh, I fucking am better now, and I wish I had done things yeah. better now, you're not growing. So it's like that's just part of it, and and I think. I mean, but I don't go back and go like, oh, I used to be a Nazi. No. Like, <laughs> I might not have been as good at communicating I mean, what I was doing. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were really funny back in your Nazi era. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, politics aside, it was actually just great craftsmanship. Thank you. Yeah, Philip Glass, you know, if you listen to, if you, if you decode his numeric symphonies these days, it actually ciphers into a horrible condemnation of his earliest works. He's like, what was I thinking? And I, was, I just thought that was, I don't know. I just thought, that, like that, the Beastie Boys. That, Dan, your joke was the Philip Glass of jokes. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to pick an artist. I thought it would be funny if Philip Glass was like, I'm sorry, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> like, he was like, I'm sorry, that was really uh, bad of yes. me. Uh, oh, when you went, yeah. What was I, what was I doing? Uh, all right. So uh, you got your, you, we got your Comedy Central special, which mm-hmm. we, we 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 were gonna plug, and now we're we're, we're plugging we're plugging. Go back and watch it. Go, yeah. Um, on a website. I want to talk about this. I follow you on Instagram, so I see these clips of you doing this getting better thing. Can we yeah. talk about getting better? I love that, the, that's the only way I'm familiar with it. What is that? It's my podcast. Um, I just talk to people that I like. Uh, sometimes it's my mom. I've sometimes. never been on it. I, I, <laughs> Oh, don't make it like that from the get go. It doesn't. I'm just setting you he up for one to, of your. He talks to people that he likes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just talk to people and ask them about their process about getting better. He about. talks to cool people. He talks to people that are awesome. Yeah, uh, right. he talks to yeah. people. But he wants to it, hang out with on, on, on a regular basis. Because I see the, from from the clips, I see the themes do seem to surround actually getting better, not just idle chit chat. Like you actually are. Specifically talking to people about self improvement and like yeah. how they were w- worse than they are now and what yeah, they did where there. they got to and how they and how they got there and where they want to go to and the continued struggles um, from achieving your dreams and then having new dreams or health things or or, or whatever. I talked to a lot of different people about different things. But can you it, give me any tips as an interviewer? Um, like don't, don't interrupt, interrupt people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that wiggle dance yeah. is earned. I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good chemistry. Nice. <laughs> I'd make a pretty good guest, I think. Yeah, please, come you, on. You Does it, it's too you, late. I invited myself. I'll never come on. You can't ask to be on Getting Better. Yeah. Exactly. That's you why can. I don't want to ever be on it. I'm getting well, worse. Well, then definitely don't come and on. Then I won't. <laughs> I'm your Magneto now. <laughs> I will be out in the street crushing Nazi heads because of a weird projection I have. Thank you, ma'am. Nice. 
Boat, please. And you will help Xavier. fulfill my collection. We've had <laughs> Danny Pudi. We've had Yvette Nicole Brown. You can come help fulfill in that world. Yeah, yeah. Are, but are you uh, about the production itself? Because it's on video. Uh, what, how, how does the? Are you producing it with anybody? What, are no, you? it's just all me. It's not making any money. Uh, <laughs> but what do you do? You set up a camera and a tripod. Just got a little, yeah, just in my office. We put on YouTube and iTunes. And, it looks you know, and sounds that. perfect. Thank you. My album producer is really good. He does a good job. That's why he's the only one that makes money. Dan, you. D- Dan you, no, my Dan. friend Halston. Oh, okay. Producer. Dan, you, yeah. you're not going to be on the show. Let it go. <laughs> I don't. I already said I don't want to be. That's why these compliments Dan, are amazing. Dan, don't try to neg me into being on the show. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> of course, I, I, I would love never. to have you. Oh, you think I don't want to talk to a successful weirdo about his weird success? I will never, ever. <laughs> Let's let's talk to Rob Schraub about something. Yes, sitting over here languishing. You've been very quiet. It's kind of like I I'm wanna... trying to be better. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because you go in the Reddit and you read? Don't go on the Reddit. I don't have to. Reddit comes to me. How? In what form? No, in just I don't know. It's just I I what. I always tell people don't go on the Reddit. There's an interesting topic. Like, do okay. you do you do you peruse? Do you self Google? Do you? I don't usually self Google. Sometimes you find things randomly, just on accident. Um, somebody reviewed my special, and, and I didn't like it because they they. Uh, I don't care about. I mean, they should let people do what they want. But <laughs> I didn't like the fact that they they were like, I think this guy is a phony, and I think this guy isn't who he says he is. And then they, <laughs> And then they call my son, and then they go, I ne- even though I never met him, and then, and, then they, and then they call my son weird, and then I was like, fuck you, I'm going to fucking get in your face online, so and they, they, did. Got, they got, they got, I don't want to say they got you or triggered you. Yeah, they triggered because... me, and then they were just happy because this was the first time anyone had fucking read their articles, and so I was like, oh, I fucking It was an article? Yeah. Wait, were they semi-legit? No, it was some guy, uh, I would say for, for real, uh, it was Pace Magazine, which is not, I mean, who cares? Exactly. What is it? Well, I, 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 we care now. But um, the com, I had done interviews and shit with them before, and the main comedy guy had always been cool with. So it kind of that's what reason kind of tr- triggered me. Um, but I guess that guy went on vacation, and they had an assistant <laughs> comedy <laughs> reviewer who was some open micer, and he just fucking was like, "Oh, this guy, that answers every yeah, question, yeah, doesn't yeah, it?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he also said that he felt the only generations, only good comedy was Lisa Lampanelli, which <laughs> it's just a weird thing to say. The, the, I love Lisa Lampanelli. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a weird thing to say whether you love Lisa or not. Yeah, yeah. because it's like a weird thing to. Why be do so... you get to review comedy then? Yeah, and why, why, how is that? How is the art of the critic like support the, the idea of like, well, here's an empirical statement I'll make. Well, then you're not a very good critic, are you? You're not at all. You're more of a weird scientist yeah. who's like practicing a medicine that doesn't exist. His whole summary, uh, he when he tweeted it out was like I reviewed Ron Funches comedy special which was okay I was like that is not a review (laughs) either like it or not like it just saying it's okay it's Uh, just you're a fucking milk toast piece of shit fuck you so it triggered me so to answer your question yeah sometimes I look but do you so so do you so then do you uh, do you pull back from that as a matter of health? Yeah, my girlfriend's really good at that. She tries to make me realize how blessed I am and how how good I have it. And to just she's like these people are just trying to knock you off your course and leave it alone. This is something feel wrong about that 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 like as a person who wants to hold a microphone and connect with people that you then by virtue of your chosen path that you in order to do it well that you're not allowed to do what regular oh, ass people do which yeah. is go on reddit yeah that 100%. doesn't that seem wrong I, I don't like it at all but and there's also, nothing to... i don't like that i always like i mean i still occasionally would do it because i just like to remind people that we're human beings i'm a person just like you you can't just tell me you can't just say anything to me or you can that you're right but i will respond to you right but then the whole thing but then it becomes stupid because then you respond and then the next thing you know there's some fucking blog that's like right. you just oh, fucking man. Ron, you've got ron funches is on a tirade oh. 
fuck and then the people are like, who the fuck is Ralph Funches? God just, damn. Well, <laughs> oh, man. Hey, uh, Sonny, I'm older than you. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, like, any, any, like, that is the fucking worst. When you're like, like, the Reddit was like, because you would, your inbox, and then you would just go like, hey, what, <laughs> you just respond and go, human being over here or whatever, and then it was like, oh, shit, this did make a really handy, like, kirk click and drag over to oh, look over here to what Dan Harmon said to a fan. And they're like, well, not, I didn't mean it. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, they just cut one thing out and, they, and then there's everything else. Is I don't know about. what, I, I, I don't know what, I'm still dealing with this shit. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what. Yeah, you deleted your shit for a while. I deleted right? my Twitter. Yeah. I deleted my Twitter the morning. Why, Dan? I deleted my Twitter the morning that James Gunn got fired uh, because it, the headline was James Gunn gets fired for nine uh, for, for tweets from nine years ago. And I was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, not not why I signed up for Twitter, not why I fucking worked for nine years. And and, and, and I, I spent I, I rode my limo to San Diego to Comic Con that weekend, um, uh, archiving all my tweets and then deleting my Baller. account. Yeah. And I was so happy. I spent the entire Comic Con going. I, people would go like, "How you doing?" I'm like, "I'm fucking good." Like, I just deleted my Twitter account. They're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I fucking James Gunn thing just like made me go. This is not. I don't want to fucking deal with this and all this shit." And then I came back home and like got on Instagram, and w there was an Instagram comment from somebody saying, "Hey, just letting you know. I'm sure, don't kill the messenger, but." Uh, everyone's saying that you deleted your Twitter account because you're a pedophile and you did this thing and all this stuff. And, 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 and then I like found out about this, like, it, it was like, like these, like, like 4chan people, like, like I deleted my Twitter account. Be yes, because James Gunn got fired. So therefore go ahead and link it to, like, yeah. And I did, I, it was, it, but it was like, they were like, why did Dan Harmon just deleted his Twitter account? And then someone goes, well, why did he do that? What does he have to hide, LOL? And then someone responded with, maybe this. And then they started pushing it out, and my account was already deleted. So I was like, oh, fuck, what? okay, what do I do? Phone ringing off the hook, publicists, like lawyers, it's everybody. Are you a pedophile? <laughs> How are we going to deal with this? So, and I was, I was in the back alley of this show. There's a show. I, I, I wish I could mark the episode because I came out here because the decision was, it, it for the first time in my life, and that's why it's just, all this stuff. Does, it makes me so sad because my my entire mo was always be as honest as possible, always be honest. And for the first time in my life, the way to fight dishonesty was to say nothing, mm -hmm. and it just hurts so bad. And I, I like came out here, but it wasn't the right decision. After 48 hours of like, you wouldn't believe the fucking calls. Like, hey Dan, it's, it's me, Mike Thompson. I got, I got crisis interventionist, uh, the St Stafford, uh, Leah Maffob, nothing. He's a bit of a, as, as, like, like people that are like, hey, so listen, here's the thing. Like, does anybody know for sure you're a pedophile? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> None of this is real. Like, like, just let me tell people. Do you got any pictures of you not touching kids? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> the 48 hour clock goes by. So the New York Times, the, 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 the thing that made me lose hope in all of humanity <laughs> was the day that the New York Times, who had contacted my publicist for a comment about it. They're like, hey, what's going on with this thing? And my publicist said, uh, he's not commenting right now because I'm sitting in my kitchen like uh, on a speakerphone going like, okay, so what do I do to not get fired by a Cartoon Network, AT&T, all this stuff? Like, what are we doing? How do we coordinate? How do I get Cartoon Network to say um, we support him so that they don't pull a Disney, mm -hmm. so that we don't continue this fucking slide? And, um, and we're brokering apologies. And I finished brokering one in back appropriately by the fucking dumpster in b behind this theater and then came out on this stage and did a show where I said nothing and it basically said nothing until now. And it, it, but but uh, it was like in the 48 hours where, so his, his Twitter account is deleted and so then it's like the story is like Dan Harmon deletes his Twitter account after video surfaces 
of him fucking a, b- a baby doll nine years ago. Oh, in a yeah. Couch. Yeah, I remember this. <laughs> and, and it was like, no, that's not true. Dan Harmon deletes his Twitter account, therefore video surfaces, but how complicated is that story? Well, the New York Times, like that was the point where it's like, the New York Times like, like just kind of ran with that story, like inherent in the headline, like Dan Harmon deletes Twitter account after video surfaces because they, they got that from Breitbart from but like all of these people it was like there's yeah, this inherent like yeah. cause effect timeline to it I'm like no Dan Harmon deletes Twitter account because James Gunn got fired for tweeting about uh, fucking kids and Dan Harmon knows that he's not going to stand up to that test and Dan Harmon wants nothing to do with Twitter anymore and once Dan Harmon leaves it's time to hit that pinata on the way out the door so Dan Harmon regrets leaving Twitter in the first place because he didn't know that you could shutter your window to fucking crystal knocked and have people just kick in your door like I, I it, it, like but there, and there's no way to like come out and scream that without mm. making things worse, making things more clickable. And the only uh, way to win that fight, which a fight I never wanted to have, is to be silent. Yeah. Which is something I've next, never done. Wait for the next thing to come along. Yeah, uh, like, like, it was like, oh, so this is how you, living well is best revenge. Uh, uh, just, just grin and bear it. Don't feel the fire. Don't kick up dust around it. Your contract's not signed yet. All this stuff. <laughs> It was like, 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 like. This isn't. Well, then, what am I then? Then, what age have we entered where where honesty is no longer the best policy? Where the people whose names on their accounts on social media are the same as their birth certificate, the people who say what went on with them yesterday for real, are are like their word is weighed less than hordes of people with fake accounts that just want to, like, if you, if enough dust gets kicked up around you on the internet. You can get fired. I, I really, I remain to this day, every night I sit in bed playing Cookie Collector and Minecraft and just thinking about it. Yeah. I have no idea where to file it. I don't know how yeah. to feel. Yeah. People get shot, though, so who cares? <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, so, I mean, good point. So we've entered an era where I have to go from being happy about being honest to being thankful I'm not shot yet. Yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> that's, that's really where we are as a country. That feels real, real bad. It does. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part, though, I know is, 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 is I do. I don't mean to just kind of not be empathetic to what you're going through because that is horrible, and I've only experienced it in a very small way, and I know how it made me feel and how. Um, Did you get uh, like what? What are you referring just, to? No, just people just talking a lot of trash, and you're just, or just particular room people are like, you're not who you say you are. I'm just like, I don't know how to prove this or make you think who that I am, who I am, and so it's just small things. But my thing, my favorite part about this story is that that you there was a moment that you must have had where you where this James Gunn thing came out, and then you went. Oh shit! There's a video of me fucking a baby doll. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that was the last thing on my mind. No, no, I didn't think about that at all. I, I was, I was surprised. I was like, oh, that video. I was like, oh. I was like, God damn! I did a good job mixing that sound. If, 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 if we go through uh, Channel 101 stuff, we all yeah. committed loads of crimes. No, I totally forgot about that. I, I, I had deleted that video. Uh, I, I, I shot that video in the community offices. It was 2009. I was like, it's a month after it was on Channel 101, I was like, that needs to come down if I'm going to be in the business that Tina Fey is in. Like, I am not, I am a political figure now, I'm visible, I need to not be doing this anymore. I'm not Johnny Rotten anymore. I can't, I, 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 I took it down. And someone, but someone had, someone had, some admirable fucking, like, Captain Crunch kept it in their Davy Jones locker for all that time, <laughs> next to their Crunch Berries. Um, <laughs> I was what I was thinking was more, much more imp- appropriately was nine years of tweets. I was I wasn't thinking about videos. Mm. I was thinking about nine years of being yeah. actively reacting to society in the moment. Uh, no way I'm going to hold up to that test. No, it's absolutely joke. not. Yeah, none of us really. I mean, maybe me. So I thought, <laughs> yeah, maybe you, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought briefly about like the idea of going through and like going 
this one, no, that one, no, that one. And then it was like, no, no, no. Like, that would take three years mm. <laughs> to go through nine years of tweets and go, oh, this one, no, no, no. And I was like, no, the only right thing to do here is like abscond. Well, that's is- been one of the kind of like greatest tricks that's been played in the last few years is the shift of responsibility. Like it, it was our job to, not to necessarily be reckless and again to not be harmful and cause cause pain, but our, our job to test boundaries and have fun and to, to just say whatever reckless thing that we say. And then we're supposed to be checked in, in by the real people who are in charge. And now it's like the people who are in charge just say whatever the fuck and they lie and they do whatever and no one really checks checks that and it's just like no we're scrutinized you know but by the end of the day it kind of lets me know that it's all kind of pointless because like if if it really had a power like then there'd be so many powerful people who have been already like truly powerful people who would have been taken down by it you know like i'll give it some time okay i'll be patient I mean, it is pretty easy to get somebody fired right now. We haven't changed that part of our culture. That depends on their value, I believe. Like, if, if people, it's just like any sports team. You well, can a, human cut beings, if you a human being's suck, value you know? should be like they should not be able to get fired because a bunch of people on Twitter oh, said come fire them. On now. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, I ideally, I'm yeah, not, I'm not ideally, talking about what's yeah. the reality. I'm saying like, like what um, your mailman shouldn't get fired because uh, he tweets something that goes viral. That I, mm-hmm. I just I, in an ideal universe, that mm, shouldn't be the case. There's so many things like well, you can go with that though, because then by that stance, if some if a, a cop that's like a racist cop known to, to tweet out racist things shouldn't should they be held accountable for that i mean that's i mean that's that's dumb applause they say no yes. i'm kidding i'm kidding uh no that's i mean a cop is like yeah it's a, like it's like bring it back to mailman so i can control this uh, <laughs> but it's no that's i mean we talked about did you like the weatherman i made the joke the the, the, the weatherman that stumbled over martin luther king's name did you did mm-hmm. were you cognizant of that no. the, the and I was like, "Oh, you didn't you didn't know about that?" Uh, it was like he he there was there was actually two separate guys. It was like, it was like he was talking. He said tried to say Martin Luther King's name because he was saying like, "By the way, there's a celebration in this park or whatever." He said he said Coon instead of King, mm-hmm. it, like while he was saying the name, and it went viral. And the weatherman lost his job. And I I'm like. Is that how we find out people are racist? And then I made the joke of like, isn't that the one job where you could safely be racist? As a weatherman, yeah, yeah. Because like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. Like, (laughs) are you gonna not tell Mexican people it's raining? Like, (laughs) see, I still, I can still do stand up if I. The white weather's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Seventy-eight degrees again. But you, I mean, obviously, yeah. They say great. It's like we don't, we, we, we want, we, we want our cops to not be racist. Obviously, that's a truism. Therefore, if a cop in his private life is on social media and and reflects racism on his Facebook page with some post or even a retweet, then it's yeah, it's rough. It's just a slippery slope. We're dealing with new problems. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, I, I, I hope it stays fun. Uh, I, uh, I don't want to live in a world where it, where the people that are in control of who, uh, profits, who's plugged into the, the hive mind and who's excommunicated where I, I, I worry about buying a ticket to this ride where it's, we've already seen, I feel like, uh, the nefarious among us, let's call them right-wing people, people who are nihilistic a little bit about politics and ideology and the way that we interact with media, that they can actually hack, as it were, uh, the leftist mindset by, for instance, saying, hey, what if I were to tell you that this person, by your definitions, is technically this or that? Wouldn't you want them to then by your own rules, suffer or divide or compartmentalize. Mm -hmm. And they're enjoying that right now. Mm -hmm. And it's really distressing to watch them uh, winning. 
Yeah. Yeah. So what? And I, I guess I, I can predict what you're gonna say is, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fun. No, that's not fun. <laughs> Okay, I predicted wrong. Yeah, no, that's not fun. I mean, there's lessons to be learned, and just that, like, um, and, and overcoming that. And, and, and I think overall, like, it, it, it gets so complicated when you break it down into, like, like all that type of stuff where it's right wing and social media. But at the end of the day, it's all about separatism. It's all about trying to separate people from, from, so that they just stay in these little boxes so that a small amount of people can screw the rest of us over. So if you're just like, whether I'm going like, oh, I don't trust you because you're an old white man, or you don't trust me because I'm black, or, or, or women doesn't feel safe around around anyone, then then like that's just keeping us all separate, and that's all allowing us to be taken advantage of. It's 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 through unity and through through equality and through diversity that we that we are able to fight those things, and and then you you can be like, well, I wouldn't believe those things about that person you know you know and maybe the best way to prove ourselves if there was if you could call it a battle between those two sides the the best way to to proof to prepare for that battle is for the individual to uh have a funchian uh kind of <laughs> like i'm not I'm probably not going to judge this person like so much. Like, 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 like it, it, if we if we don't get caught up in the timber, chop down this tree. I heard that this thing is happening, so let's off with their head. Oh yeah, no, I hate that. I, I I've never been in the business of throwing people away or calling people m monsters. I think that's one. Of the, that's another tool to separate people. We're all capable of horrible choices and horrible decisions, and you have to have... And I'm not saying that you, you excuse someone's actions, or excuse what they've done, but to act as if you're better or you're right. different. Right, to grab that ticket. Isn't that kind of like not to uh, over... Uh, I'm, I'm uh, doing a writer habit here. I'm trying to connect it to the beginning. Mm -hmm. That guy in that park when you're having your epiphany who's being abusive to his charges, who's going like, you fucking people, I'm taking... Like, that guy felt licensed to be abusive to uh, his mental health uh, uh, flock because... He felt like, oh, I'm, I've got the high ground here. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to continue to be tempted in that direction. Like, we're always going to be told as primates by Twitter, by Newsweek, by this ringing thing in our pocket. We're going to constantly being told, hey, there's somebody out there that's worse than you that you could punch down on right now if you take this opportunity. And or it's going to be about maybe. someone like, out there trying to take what you have or trying to stop you from getting your goals. And, at the end of the day, like you, you meet so many people that you're like, we all have the same goals. We all just kind of want the same shit, no matter what. We all just want to be happier and make a little bit more money and have more time with our fucking family and do vacations and shit and work less. We all just we want all... a pool. Yeah, and I like want maybe pool. one more bedroom. Yeah, I love one more bedroom because then more I could maybe get DJ equipment that I won't what? use. <laughs> <laughs> there, should a, there should be a political party where the chant is one more bedroom. Yeah. Like, if you have a one-bedroom apartment, don't you want one more bedroom? Yes, you do. <laughs> if you have a six-bedroom mansion, don't, wouldn't you like to have seven bedrooms? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would. Yeah, if I want a little bit more. <laughs> uh, what time is it? How, uh, what, 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 what makes me a good host? It's 9.30. Hey, hey Shrab. Yes. Um, don't blow me off. That was a blow-off. It's not a blow-off. I'm, I'm doing what you asked. Uh, Shrab, Scud, 25 years anniversary. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've, uh, one of my pet peeves is when somebody's uh, Instagram feed is a, a thousand things over and over, but I've been really enjoying all of the fan art that, that the people have done for your... Uh, it's pretty amazing. It's fucking great. I'm Someone pretty... did the, the ketchup and mustard one? Well, that's Joey Garfield. That's Joey Garfield? Jo Joey Garfield drew oh, that. From, yeah. from the first nurse. Ron, I did yeah. a comic book with Dan like back in 1994 and it was the reason why we moved out here and it just turned 25 last oh, congratulations. last 
Tuesday. It's the only comic book. It's the only comic book that I've ever actually read. I, I, I'm not a comic book guy, but I, I, I love Scud. Like you, you've given me the omnibuses and the, and, and Thank the you. whole thing. It's, it's beautifully drawn. It's, it's, Thank it's, you. It's, uh, it's, it's really wonderful. It's, it's very you. It's, it's. What was it called? It's called Scud the Disposable Assassin. Oh, and then they made a video game out of. They it. did. Yeah, oh, I played the know. game. It was not a good game. No, it was not. <laughs> No, it was a Sega, terrible game. Sega Saturn. Sega yeah. Saturn. Sega Saturn guy. Oh, yeah, when you a have game. a Sega Saturn, you gotta play <laughs> whatever minute, is out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's not much. Just not Daytona, a good game. USA, and Virtual Fighter. There were two games. There was uh, there was the game you played, and there was a PC version. Both were terrible. Uh, but it, it's cool. Yeah, we but it's cool to have game. a game made yeah. out of your this guy was the thing like that a, you like made a, out of your a, mind. A side scroller. It was a side scrolling game, like. When Doom and Duke Nukem was hitting the scene, it was yeah, it was bad like timing. about yeah bad timing, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's but it was it's I've very cool to watch all the uh, like all the fans do their version of the yeah. artwork, and it's it's because it's really like it kind of choked me up. But it's very emotional. Yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta say, you know, not to play the bad guy, but. <laughs> Scud the, Scud the Disposable Assassin is like, it takes place in a future where you can buy a robot assassin out of a vending machine mm -hmm. and you can uh, assign it a target and then once it finishes killing the target, it self-destructs. Kind of a rip-off of Mr. Me Seeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, shit! You Shots fucking, fired. You fucking stole Scud. It wasn't my idea. Whose was it? No, it was J mine. Justin. 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 It was Justin. my idea. Wait, wait. Was, was Justin... Uh, consciously or, or unconsciously? Yeah, I didn't. Doing I know it. nobody. Nobody recognized it. And like, I think later on, it was like, I oh didn't, shit, I, did we kind of rip off Scud a little bit until like, like <laughs> a fair amount of fans. Until you like saw going, them making the that heck? action yeah, figure money. <laughs> Scud, the, uh, and, the, and the opening up uh, uh, book, uh, Scud kills his target and then is washing off his hands in the bathroom and sees his reflection in the mirror and and reads the warning on the back that says. This, will, u this unit will self-destruct upon termination of time. So he goes out and has to kill everybody uh, as a as a uh, like a hitman for hire to keep his first target alive, like on life support system. Yeah, to pay so, for the hospital bills. Yeah. So so is it Jeff? Is this a character? Who's Jeff? Yeah. Jeff is the demon monster. Thing. Named after your brother, not me. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he, he he all the episodes is him going out and being a gun for hire to keep. The, the life support going on the first person so he doesn't die. Right. And he falls in love with Susudio. Yes. Who looks exactly like Kate, your wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Ron Funches, I don't offer this to every podcast guest. Okay. Uh, How would you like a free comic book? <laughs> yeah. I like it. I, Based I'll, off of a shitty video game. <laughs> And is there episode a, of Rack and Marty. Is there a kind of podcast that you would have rather been on? <laughs> like, it, whether it's a fishing podcast, or like, mm -hmm. is there like a fantasy podcast you're like, you know, like, I do my Ron Funches thing, and it would have been nice if I could ever be a guest on X kind of podcast. Like, like let us fulfill your fantasy. Ooh, okay. Hmm... I guess I was. You, you got something? I'm, I'm waiting on you. Okay. No, I, I thought you were. Gonna I don't wanna, a, a podcast that doesn't put you on the spot is probably yeah, the, it's the yeah. best because I didn't know about that. Well, I'll do something. Else. Well, you think of the answer. I'll do a, uh, a one man show about, I heard, uh, a plumbing. <laughs> do, do, you want, do you want theme music to this or no? Uh, if, that's an intro if you want. One man show about plumbing. One man show about plumbing. <laughs> Just think about your thing. Hey, uh, I'm here to check the pipes. The plumbing. Okay, I just, I just do. I look. Oh, look at all these plungers. <laughs> Uh, for people who want to subscribe to the podcast right now, visually, there's a lot happening. It's $5 a month. Oh, mamma mia. It's a, it's a matzo turd coming out of there. Oh. 
Is, is this you trying to talk Ron into wanting to be on this podcast or not wanting to be on this I'm podcast? giving Ron time to think about the kind of podcast he'd want to be on. Okay. Now... But but you can't be that captivating. He's he's going to be distracted. By Inevi- your- well, inevitably, the answer is going to be, I don't want to cue you, but you're going to be like, actually, Dan, this was the pot because of the work I do. But I don't want to, I don't want to, <laughs> you're going to be like, actually, you just did the podcast that I wish I was on. But don't feel free to not do that. Hey, whoa. <laughs> hey, there's a treasure map in here. Go down inside to find a treasure. Oh, that's a I'm weird a map. <laughs> Excuse me, what? That's not a map. <laughs> hey, this ain't no map. It's like instructions. <laughs> I better go down. Go, 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 go. Hey, this place is real dark and spooky. Oh, a severed woman's head. What the fuck? Who would dispose of a woman's head by putting it on a ledge? I better keep looking down this. Oh, God. <laughs> Holy shit. Sewer pipe. Oh, my God. Whoa. Appendages. I wonder if they belong to the woman whose head that was. I better think about calling the police. But I got a warrant out on me. <laughs> you don't become a plumber without having a dark past. Uh, my fingerprints and foot boots are all over this place. <laughs> foot, foot boots? Foot boots. <laughs> I better call my friend. It's me. Oh, hey, man. What's going on? Hey, uh, I got a bit of a problem here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Listening. Uh, I went on a job and found a note slash map. Okay. Okay. Good. Went down the toilet. Uh-huh. Went into a some kind of uh, underground area. Okay. Yeah. Found the dismembered parts of a crime Ooh. victim. Ooh, s- s- say no more. Where are you? I got a piece of paper. I'm in the tunnels underneath the uh, 123 North Wabash. All right. All right. I want you to do me a favor. Destroy that map slash instruction page. Hey. And, oh. then, and then I want you to... To, to open the head, there's a coin in there. Wait, whoa, hey, hey, whoa. O- open the head, there's a coin in there. Hey, Luigi. Yeah. <laughs> I you know a little you. bit more about this than I thought you'd know, huh? I, I got a hunch. There's a coin. You got a hunch. It sounds like you got a chain of evidence. <laughs> Luigi, we, we go back. Here, and- I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Open up the head and, and just just see if there's a coin in there. Luigi, I... Okay, I'll wait. Hello? 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 Oh. He's saying hello. Then we will name him Mario. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello. I don't know what that was. What the uh, fuck? Uh, I, 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 I I'm ready I now. Oh, okay. You're ready. You're ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. What kind of podcast would you rather be on? I've always wanted to be on a podcast where a guy does a one-man show about plumbing and then does it again, but not using any of that same material. All right. All right. Happy to oblige you.
Do, does, is it, so the same things happen? No, you're just a plumber. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, I'm a plumber. Hello. Okay. Well. Welcome to Venda Home. Venda Home. Venda Home, the home with its own brain. Would you like some coffee, plumber? <laughs> hey. Hey, uh, whoa. Your coffee. Jeez. Would you like a cup? Uh. (laughs) (laughs) You selected number one dad. Here's your cup. (laughs) Oh, hey. I'm a number one dad, hey. Hey, usually Sister Mary Anthony's the one that uh, the get, gets gets my coffee everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, I did not get that. Yeah, you... it's, a, it's just a little bit of Italian character. Uh, I like your coffee. Thank you, Venda Home. Uh, I'm the plumber, and uh, I'm here to fix the toilet. Please follow the blinking lights on the floor to the toilet area. Okay. Well, hey. Yeah. All things considered, rather be in Philadelphia. Please, please open the door to your right. Oh, 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 whoa, oh, hey, oh, Mother Mary Magdalene, way, way, Jagadish. I'm Vemda Home. Oh, Vemda Home. I need my plumbing fix. Oh, oh. Oh! Locking doors. Oh! 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 Closing blinds. Oh! Damn! Oh! Re- recalling t- t- satellite dishes. Oh! Oh! Shutting sunroof. Oh! Closing moonroof. Oh! Oh! Different things. The moonroof. Would you the- like some coffee? Hmm. Hey, uh, look, uh, I got a job description. I'm just here to... Fix my plumbing. Yeah. Hey, uh, look, uh, hope you didn't get the wrong idea. Uh, I'm, uh, just Plum- a... Plumber? Plumber. Plumber? Yeah. I'm Venda Home. Yeah. Fix my ass. <laughs> Is Bro- your it's broken. It, is it plumbing? It's supposed to be. Are you a robot? No. 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 Okay, all right. No. <laughs> don't ask questions, don't deny. Uh No, I'm a I'm a I'm a, a full grown naked man. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Oh hey, oh hey, hey, uh no wrong answers. Uh I'll fix your ass. <laughs> Uh, will, you fi- will you fix it real good? Uh, go, go, Mario Torch Helmet. <laughs> You've selected number one dad. <laughs> oh, whoa, hey, oh. This place is a real belly of the proverbial whale. God damn! <laughs> Amelia Earhart's airplane! A submarine from World War II! Whoa! And a giant penny. Oh, a giant penny from the penny pilferer from the Batman mythology. <laughs> oh, a giant penny always in the Batcave, usually, from his battles with that character. <laughs> A little bit of DC trivia. Oh! Oh! <laughs> so, uh, I fail, to, I fail to see what's broken down here. <laughs> I'm leveling my expert eye at the surroundings and everything seems comb see, comb you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh no, oh no. 
Here comes the problem. Uh oh. Here comes the problem. Oh. Here comes the problem. Hey. <laughs> Here comes the problem. Okay. <laughs> Mom? Dad? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> What could it have meant? You should see the other guy. <laughs> okay, so is that... That's pretty good. Kind of like, oh, I think so. I mean, look, as a, we, we here in Harmontown accept the possibility that that wasn't... <laughs> On all four cylinders. Yeah. <laughs> if having seen it, you want another, you want one more. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I would, but I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> uh, what time is it? How do you end a show? We, we don't, we, we, I never know I how. I think we just did. Well, that was a pretty good closer. <laughs> uh, giggle Fit, just yeah. Google it. Google it. Google everything <laughs> Funch is related. Yeah, just give me a Google and then support me financially. Uh, <laughs> follow follow Instagram around Funches and uh, like, wait, how do they find your podcast? Is there getting like, better well, podcast? Yeah, it. just Google getting better with Ron Funch. Ron Funches is like my favorite thing that I'm doing. I, I like it a lot. People seem to be getting stuff out of it. It's fun. You, That's you, fantastic. Please come by. No, no, no. I won't accept that invitation. Okay. Uh, I'll come by over my own dead body. Um, but I know I do. I mean, I, I I just like the idea. I like that. I like that theme song. I like the idea of talking to people. That's about me. I better. sing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I, I, think, yeah, I didn't think it was. <laughs> I, no, I, I thought like, you thought it was professional, but that's me. <laughs> Ron, like a couple times, I've been on the road uh, doing my gigs, and uh, you you had been at the theater before us, like the Wilbur in Boston or whatever. And everybody that is like, I, I always ask when I when I go to a theater, so who was cool that was here recently? And your name comes up a lot, and people always love like, the fact that you were in the building, and that like the, the, everybody is always happy that like you left joy in your wake. So that, that's that, that's oh. a cool thing. Thank you. It's a thing to aspire to if you're under 35. If you're 46, <laughs> and you've left nothing but scorched earth in your wake. Let's give I it up for Ron Funches, everybody. Thank you for coming to Harvard Town. Yeah. Ron Funches. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Schraub. Let's give a shout out to Donna, the therapist. Church making the photos good. Zach making the beats rap. I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis. Let's give it up for Schraub and your mayor, Dan Harmon. Dave Klein wearing a big hat. Can we all get a you? Oh yeah, I love you all. Drive fast, take chances. Thank you. Zach, put a beat on. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.